Welcome back to Black Cat Crypto Club. Guys, I wanted to jump on today. There's a few things um, going on right now. There's some bearish things kind of developing, and there's some bullish indicators going off. So wanted to jump on and show you guys both sides of the coin and uh, just share with you guys some news that's going on. So we are going to get into all of that. Make sure you stick around. You're going you're gonna to want to know all of this information. Um, but before we do, as always, guys, this month I am uh, showcasing Flipside Sanctuary here. Um, here. So uh, you can go over to their website, flipsidesanctuary.org. Um, and they've got a PayPal button right here. You can just help out these needy animals um, by donating right here. You can also send them a check. They've got Venmo, they've got Patreon. So really easy, guys. It's uh, flipsidesanctuary.org. Also a 501c nonprofit tax deductible. Okay. Um, if you guys can, can even see that uh tax deductible donations okay so this helps you this helps these animals helps this sanctuary do the the good work that they're doing so head over throw them a dollar or two guys again the sanctuaries that i i showcase on this channel are smaller animal sanctuaries so um, any little bit of, of anything you can help out with really helps them out a lot. So go over, help them out, do a good thing for the day. All right, so let's get into the news. Um, first up is Donald Trump is cozying up to Wall Street and is eyeing Jamie Dimon for Treasury Secretary. Now, the reason I wanted to bring this up, guys, is everybody in the crypto space, um, including Donald Trump himself, thinks that Donald Trump is the pro-crypto candidate. But this is probably, I think Jamie Dimon is maybe the worst person that Donald Trump could put in as Treasury Secretary, maybe short of Elizabeth Warren. I mean, if you guys remember back, you've watched some of my previous videos, you guys know that Jamie Dimon is not a fan of crypto. He, uh, he thinks Bitcoin is a Ponzi scheme. He thinks it's a fraud. He thinks it's a pet rock. He thinks Satoshi is going to come back out of the woodwork and increase the 21 million coins to 42 million or whatever he thinks <laughs> completely baseless uh you know just putting this out there hopefully you know that that can't happen by now if you've watched my show that is not how bitcoin works um but you know this this just kind of goes to show you guys that i i don't know this is why i am skeptical of of politicians in general um but trump putting jamie diamond in for treasury secretary not a good look for his pro crypto campaign now um on the flip side we've got the biden you know i'm, I'm i'll talk bad about both uh <laughs> So on the flip side, you've got the obvious hostility to crypto that we've seen over the last four years from the current administration and a, a bit of a too little too late effort since this has all become a political thing when Donald Trump came out and said that he supports it. So um, not great for Biden either. Um, just to uh, give kind of a fair balance to a political choice that I have really no interest in. Uh, <laughs> I mean, 
I don't know, guys. This just goes to show that, you know, politicians, politicians gonna politic. And what can you really say about any politician? Not much. Not much positive. So I won't. And I don't. But anyways, just something to keep in mind. Donald Trump is going to be speaking at the um, Bitcoin conference in Nashville next week. And if there's anything that Donald Trump can do, he can talk to the audience. So I'm sure we will see a lot of positive comments on crypto from Donald Trump in the next week. Uh, he also is kind of throwing out his fourth, not his first, not his second, not his third, but his fourth run of NFT collections. So uh, Donald Trump uses, uses crypto, so you can say that about him, um, but he does make a lot of money off of it. So why wouldn't he, right? Okay, so next off, guys, in the news, We've finally seen the S1s coming in from the spot Ethereum ETF, and we are seeing about the same thing, almost exactly the same thing when it comes to the fee fight that these ETF providers are, are you know, buying to be the, the lowest fee ETF and kind of they're, they're kind of having this war and driving out, driving down Ethereum ETF. Uh, fees. So what we have here, um, right here, is, it, it says, except Grayscale's fund, fees for the proposed ETFs will range from 0.19% to 0.25%. Now notice, except for Grayscale's fund, guys, this is the bearish part of the video. Grayscale seems to be grayscaling again and what we saw with the bitcoin etf was grayscale came out with a 2.5 percent which is exactly what they're charging for their etf product and it was so much higher just like this than than their competitors and so what ended up happening is grayscale has something like nine billion dollars worth of ethereum that they've kept their fees too high and i mean the the same exact thing is going to happen with ethereum that we saw with bitcoin and their their grayscale uh bitcoin etf is they're gonna start selling off a ton of ethereum just like they did with bitcoin so guys, if you remember back, you know, several weeks, a few months ago, you know, that was kind of the downward pressure that we saw on Bitcoin was just constant selling from Grayscale. I mean, they they didn't have they had something like, I don't know, 80 to 100 days after the ETFs launched, Grayscale had you know, close to 100 days of outflows every single day it took them months to actually see a, a a neutral let alone a positive day so we're probably gonna see that happen with ethereum again now i say that's bearish but guys if you remember back to the bitcoin etf yes for a few weeks we did go down while Grayscale was selling off and institutions were um, kind of mulling over and, you know, the general uh, retail market in Wall Street was kind of mulling over and kind of starting to get into these ETFs. We saw that sell off a lot faster than we did that inflow. But once we did start seeing those inflows, guys, it wasn't a bearish thing at all. You know, we, we, went from $40,000 to, I mean, sub 40. I think we were down at like $38,000 after the Bitcoin ETF uh, launched. 
And once we started getting those inflows, we soared to all time highs. So, yes, it sucks that Grayscale is doing this. I think it's a huge mistake. I don't know how they haven't learned their lesson by now, but this is what they're doing. So, <laughs> two of the biggest financial blunders that I think we've seen in a while from Grayscale, and they just are not learning. So, we do have that, uh, but these ETFs do launch on Tuesday. So do we see a dip before, before we get those inflows? Or with, a, with Bitcoin being a um, kind of a recent predecessor to this, are, you know, are, is retail and Wall Street kind of primed to start jumping in a lot quicker than they did with Bitcoin? Who knows? But long term, guys, this is uh, positive for Ethereum. I mean, I don't, I don't see any way around that. But um, okay, so last bit of bullishness to leave you guys excited and hopeful, guys. This is a golden cross that is just forming. Um, now. These these lines, the blue line and the orange lines are uh, moving averages. So I believe the if I remember right, I've seen this this indicator before. If I remember right, the blue line is a 200 movie, 200 day moving average um, or maybe the oranges and the blue is like a 50 or 100 day moving average. But regardless, we are forming this golden cross here just recently. Now, what happens is once the blue crosses down below the orange, we usually, you know, we didn't actually see this this last bull run. They didn't even cross. So this is happening for the first time since 2016's bull run. But when the blue crosses down below, you can see price goes up and then we trade sideways for a while. And then when this blue crosses back above the orange, that's when it kind of indicates that we are going to start seeing this parabolic part of the run. Now, in 2016, once this crossed, we went on to do a 20x on Bitcoin. Now, I don't think we're going to do that, but uh, I don't think we're going to do that big of a, a run. Uh, that would be mind blowing at these prices. But as you can see, the same kind of thing has happened. This bull run, we dropped below right here. And what we did was we shot up and then we've moved sideways for a while. And now that blue line is catching back up and crossing that orange line, kind of indicating that we should be approaching that parabolic time. Now, it could come sooner than people are thinking if this is uh, any indicator, but honestly, we're almost there for what most people were thinking anyways. You know, the fall is not too far off. Um, you know, a lot of people were saying, you know, the summer's always boring. We're going to trade sideways during the summer and then during the fall. And during elections, we'll get we'll get rate cuts. We'll have that election hype and things will start going parabolic. Not only that, guys, but that supply crunch that lags the having several months. Is coming due. So are we seeing that? Do we have an eminent parabolic move coming? That is yet to be seen, but this indicator definitely kind of shows that. So uh, anyways, I just wanted to show you guys that um, to keep you excited, keep you uh, looking to the future, I guess. Um, hold on to your Bitcoins and hold on tight because I think we're going to be 
be going here sooner than you can probably think. Um, now, as far as today's prices, guys, we are down on Bitcoin, maybe like 1%, kind of slightly down. Honestly, I've looked through all of the news and I don't see much. Um, honestly, there's, there is, um, there is a hack that happened in India, which was a centralized exchange hack. Um, so there is that. Guys, if you are keeping your coins on exchange, this is yet another reason to get off exchange and self custody because these exchanges can can lose your money even if they're not nefariously acting like FTX they can lose your your coins to hacks mount gox was one instance of that mount gox didn't have proper security and got hacked and lost a lot of their users funds so get your coins off of exchanges um i do have a link in the description for tangem probably one of the easiest cheapest uh high security cold wallets out there so i think the two card set is something like 55 dollars. if you use the code that i have in the description that gets you an extra 10 percent off that and guys, you'll just sleep better having your coins in your own custody. So make sure you do that. Other than that, there's not much news on why Bitcoin is slightly down. This is just kind of something that happens. The dollar is bouncing off of its recent dip, which, you know, that that between the dollar and Bitcoin, they kind of fluctuate together. You know, if the dollar is going up, Bitcoin tends to come down a little bit short any other news. So um, I think it's just kind of a normal day for crypto today, honestly. So hang in there. Uh, thank you for taking the time out of your day to watch my video. Like, subscribe and comment. Let me know if you uh, want to see anything. Let me know if you what you think of Trump. Um, endorsing Jamie Dimon is this is this uh I mean what do you think is Jamie changing his tune tune on Bitcoin and that's why Trump's eyeing him I don't know guys let me know what you think and I will see you in the next video bye